welcome to Cozy Pedas Podcast. My mommy Shan. Hey. My hey. sister Ari. Say hi, Ari. Hey. And I'm Anya. Let's go. Hey, this is Shan. Mom of the girls, thank you for checking in. If this is your first time at Cozy Womb Podcast, welcome. It's a very random but frequently posted show. Enjoy what you can when you can. It's for new parents. Y'all are very welcome. It's for a second, third, or more time around parents too. And I did not forget those of you who aren't quite there yet, haven't had your first kid, but you're thinking about it and you're just curious on what it takes to go ahead and survive the kids that you may make. Cool. Since we're all here, let's get into today's episode. Hey parents, non-parents, dads, moms, grandparents, aunties, what's up? Um, If you have a kid in the car and you do not um, want them to fear, you know, uh, social media and you want to guide them into the do's and don'ts about social media, then listen to this in your headphones, listen to this without them in the car, listen to this without them in the room. But if you want them to understand what can happen with being on the internet and having social media, then it's a good thing for them to listen to today's episode. All right, let's go. Okay, so all kids have, you know, social media. Um, I don't allow my child to have a phone. I don't allow her to go on Facebook. I don't allow her to go on IG without me. Um, Sometimes we may scroll through TikTok together. And sometimes I just don't allow her to be on it. I don't want her to get stuck on having to look at that stuff. Me personally, I have TikTok, I have IG, and I have Twitter. Just because I have two shows and I have friends and I don't go out often, but it's kind of a way for me to still communicate and keep up with what's going on. And I'm a whole adult that pays the bill for my phone, so I feel like I can handle it. A lot of kids cannot handle the... um, pressures of the internet and social media stress so you may find a lot of kids who could be preteen or teenagers hiding from their friends and family through social media and the internet um, they might lose interest on doing things that they really love and care about because they're so caught up in looking good for a post or doing a good video or getting a lot of views and likes or Um, nobody responded to this so I'm going to delete it that type of stuff you don't want your child to get caught up in that and if you're noticing any change behavior after they got their cell phone or they're not reading or they're not doing what they needed to do in school as far as grades and academics and alertness then maybe you need to limit them being on their cell phone Maybe you need to limit them being on their computers. Maybe you need to limit them, you know, keeping up with, you know, gossip and things. Like, I don't know of any teenagers around me that actually go out their way to read a book. I don't know any teenagers that go out their way to put down their phone if they have their phone. And... It's just one of those things that's just like, what are, like, what are you doing physically, though? What is feeding your mind? And if we're not feeding our teenagers' minds that are soon going to turn into adults, we're going to be in some, you know, some problems. 
And when it comes to the other side of that screen, whether it's the computer or their cell phone, you're going to have people who who prey on young children. You're going to have people who can be anything they want to be on the other side of that computer or that uh, cell phone. And it's nothing to hurry up and change your cell phone. It's nothing to use the WhatsApp app where you can't check text messages. It's nothing to use Snapchat where messages and pictures and videos disappear after 24 hours. Like, there's so many things out here set up to be deceitful or set up to be a secret, quote-unquote. And if you're noticing an increase in your child sleeping at weird hours or they can't sleep or they're feeling bullied because of somebody on the internet that they do not know is telling them something about themselves and you know better, they know better, but they're giving into it, maybe it's time for them to get off of the internet. Maybe it's time for them to, you know, get off of the social media. I disabled my um, Facebook last month and then I deactivated uh, a older page that I've had since college because I'm just like, it's unnecessary. The fact that Facebook is asking you for your um, legal identification to identify yourself for a Facebook page, I don't need it. It's unnecessary. The fact that jobs are now asking for your Facebook and your social media um, name, it's not needed. It's, It's going too far. And a lot of people spend too much time online. When your phone can clock and monitor how much time you're spending on it, you need to get off of it. You need to prioritize something else. And I don't feel like kids have the the strength or the willpower to resist scrolling through or liking or texting on social media. I don't feel like they have it in them. And then let's talk about human trafficking that happened very easy with meetups, uh, posts, 2.5 million people are forced into uh, labor at any given time. And this number is growing. Okay? This could be sex trafficking. This could be uh, trafficking for working in horrible conditions for less than to no pay for the sake of making somebody else wealthy. Like, traffic people are as young as 10 years old. boys and girls, it's teens, it's women, and you have to keep in mind that they're getting these people from somewhere. Sometimes it's broad daylight, sometimes it's meetup. sometimes it's, oh, you wanted to come get a game, meet me here, like Craigslist, like we have to be smart about the people that we meet up with, why we meet up with them, what's the purpose, all of that. We have to be very smart about what we do. And you have to constantly talk to your kids about that. You can talk to your kid about something and be like, okay, I told them. They they know better. Somebody come up to them, give them a situation, ask them if they want to come meet them or come see something, and they'll go off and walk with them. Sometimes you have to keep reiterating to your children that, hey, do not do this, do not do this, to the point of you getting on their nerves because when you don't do it, it's kind of like it goes in the ear and comes out the other. And you have major corporations backing sex trafficking, human trafficking. You have execs that, you know, have the reach to cover up and organize groups to create loopholes for this to happen. I think Atlanta has one of the highest numbers in human trafficking. And most people prey on kids through the internet. Because they're kind, they're trusting, they're open-minded, they're willing. All they have to do is see what they're into. Once you scroll through a kid's IG or Facebook for a good, or Twitter for a good, I want to say 10 minutes, you're going to get an idea of what they like. And if you start a conversation about what they like, it's nothing to 
find a loophole to see where you can really get to their heads. Like you have to communicate and you have to educate and you have to listen to your kids when it comes to social media. And I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going to be that parent that makes a whole uh, different page and so I can be on my children's social media. Because by the time they turn to teenagers, I don't know what they're going to have in place. But I just know I want to be in the conversation. I want to know the le- the lingo. I want to know the abbreviations for stuff. I want to know what, what these emojis evolve into. I want to know what's going on at their school, what's going on after school. Who are their best friends? What are their best friends doing? Go on their best friends' pages. Like I'm looking at all that stuff. And you have to listen and act out scenarios with your kids to see where their minds are at. Like, you have to understand that these kids are out here and it's a whole different lifestyle than when I was a kid. I did not have a cell phone until I was 16 years old. And that was only because I was paying the bill. It was $50. I could handle that because I was working a job at um, The Gap. You know what I'm saying? And these kids now, they get cell phones at like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. Like, what are y'all talking about? If y'all really want to communicate and have something to talk about, you need to go to the playground. You need to wait till you go to school. Or what about the house phone? Use the house phone. The house phone doesn't have cameras. It doesn't have screenshots. You ain't got to worry about your teen sending nude or explicit pictures like it's just it's a whole different thing right now and I think parents need to be more hands-on and mindful that maybe just saying it one time is not going to work maybe you need to go and up your level just to see where your child's head is at you can't always send auntie or cousin on someone's page and be like let me know what's going on on there well if you see this let me know No, sometimes you have to be the one to understand that it is your obligation to see what your child is really into. Because your child, when you're not around, when they're in front of their friends, certain friends, and when they're trying to impress other people, is a completely different person than when they're at home at your dinner table. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. It's not the same person. It's a bit more freeing. It's a bit more, oh, I'm doing whatever I want to do right now because my mom's not here or my dad's not here. So keep talking to your kids. Keep them on their toes. Hit them with scenarios out the blue when you're on the way to the store, when you're, um, you know, taking them to school, when they're putting their stuff away at home after doing homework. Just bust into their room and ask them a question and make them feel like they just have to be ready and prepared and their mind just always has to be thinking. And check on that social media. I don't care if they feel violated or anything. Your child can only feel violated when they're uh, 18 or older and they move out your house and then you bust into their house that they're paying for. The only time, okay? Before that, it's free reign, okay? Do what you need to do to protect the child that you have and you love. 